Material culture is the use of plants by people for construction, transportation, tools, decoration, uh, and any one of a number of material uses. This is perhaps the broadest area in terms of ethnobotany and one of the more difficult to define. A thatched hut is a, an example of material culture, the way it's put together, the materials in it, the plant-based materials. In Pompeii, every post had its own name, Saladan Nenilap. Every post in Anas, which was traditionally wood, had a name. A, a Pompeian cultural expert would know all of the names of every single post. Thatched huts require thatching, which has to be done by hand. This thatch here is, on Pompeii is called Tokos and Ruk. There are also woven forms of thatch, as being done here by a student from Yap. And a byproduct of thatching is that one can make another piece of material culture, a broom. Here a broom is being assembled from the midrib of the palm fronds. Material culture also includes canoes. Canoes were made of wood. They were transportation for the Micronesians, historically. This is a canoe built in Lamatrek. Uh, a canoe that uh, is built from the materials available on Lamatrek. Another piece of material culture would be the paddles for the canoe. The paddles and the canoes form the basis for a dance known here on Pompeii as a canoe dance, done originally on canoes. This image is from the late 1940s in Kichi in Pompeii, a group of men performing a traditional paddle dance. The Trikis Neef, made from breadfruit or other type of tree material, is used to pound breadfruit. The notches on the Neef allow stakes to be driven into the ground to hold the Neef steady. Now the pound is actually made of coral, it's called a pole. But the Neef itself is ethnobotanical material culture and is an item that helps produce food, breadfruit, kun a very important dish in Chuki's culture. Pounders are an important item across the islands of Micronesia. These two pounders are Pompeian pounders. This is a dok from the island of Koshai. Doks are used to pound a wide variety of starch-based foods, uh, but they are also very important in the production of fafa. Another piece of Koshayan material culture is the top and fafa. This is used to hold food during the processing of the food. It's also used to hold the finished product. It has a wide variety of uses. It was also used to hold fafa. Leaves, such as this young banana leaf, are used to hold food both during the cooking process and afterward to hold the food until it's ready to be eaten. Leaves are often used as food containers. Here, the leaf of wild sugarcane is used to hold fafa inside the basket, a special basket just for holding fafa. The fafa can keep for quite a long period of time inside these baskets made of the wild sugarcane leaf. The coconut palm leaf is used for baskets across Micronesia. Here a koshrayan fita is being woven. 
the fatars used to hold food, carry food around uh, traditionally, and is related in that sense to the Pompeii and Kiem, but they look very different, and they're woven quite differently, even though both start from the Cocos Nucifera palm. There are many items woven from members of the palm family and the relatives of the palms. Mats are often woven from pandanus. Uh, mats are an important part of material culture here in Micronesia. There are different styles of mats, and mats can also be used as small walls. This is a mat being woven uh, out of Cocos nucifera, out of the coconut palm leaf. Other things that can be woven include hats. You can see people sitting on a mat. They can weave a hat. There's a Yapi student doing a similar sort of mat style weave, but that will make the wall of a float. This is an outer island Yapi's mat, probably used for sleeping. And these are just some decorative mats produced by green banana paper in Koshrai. Palm fronds can produce a wide variety of items. This is a small decorative basket uh, made in Koshrai. This is an even smaller decorative basket also made in Koshrai. Leaves, such as the pandanus leaf, can be used to make small decorative items like these cubes. They can also be used to produce a small medicine basket or a model of a Koshrayan medicine basket seen here. The pandanus leaves have to be worked before they can be woven. They have to be pounded and softened and then you can produce small flower-like items such as these. Coconut palm leaves can make a hat for use in the sun. Head garlands are another item of material culture. They are known here on Pompeii as marmars, and they are used in celebrations, festivals, and at parties. The flowers of the Fregrea Burroana tree are especially valued, known here on Pompeii as Pur or Serin Pompeii. They are a popular choice for a head garland. Here on Pompeii, a marmar can have not just a decorative use, but an actual function. The Phimatosaurus scolopendria leaves that these dancers are wearing, known locally as Kido, acts as protection for the dancers who are dancing away from their home COSOP, from their home land unit. So the marmar had a meaning, a use, a function, beyond just being a decoration. These young dancers are wearing the flowers of Ixora Casse, known as Kechio, here on Pompeii. In addition to a head garland, this young dancer is wearing a neckband and a necklace. She has one more item of material culture on her. She is wearing Kerkerma longa, turmeric, turmeric ginger, on her skin. This is also an item of a material culture applied to the skin as both decoration and protection for the dancer. The Pompeian Ngarangar, Sakao drinking cup, is a, another piece of material culture. These are often handed down from father to son and passed down, uh, if it's a nice cup, through the generations. So the cup has a symbolism and that it ties the family together across the generations. And when used in the Nas, uh, the one cup is passed around. Everyone shares from one cup, drinks from one cup. The cup also symbolizes the unity of the family around the stone. So the cup carries a lot of meanings with it, both meanings across the generations and meanings of unity around the cup and the stone for the family, for the clan, for the COSOP, for the land unit. Sometimes material culture is just decorative. This is actually a coconut shell earring. As is often the case with the items of material culture, they are not just items we wear or items that decorate our body, but they are also items that carry a meaning. 
This dancer's black cord indicates that she is a mature woman member of her society, that she is a woman, no longer a young girl. It's a sign of her status in her society. Clothing is an area of material culture that has perhaps seen the greatest change. The students at the college wear clothes similar to students elsewhere on the planet, whether Hawaii, the United States, Europe. They wear some of the same clothes. Occasionally, there are days when they might wear a outfit that may be more traditional for these islands. There are days like Chuk Constitution Day, when the Chuki students will often dress uh, more formal to their culture as a way of celebrating their Constitution Day. But in general, it is in the area of clothing that the greatest change has occurred. These Pompeian skirts are made from Hibiscus tiliaceus, known locally as colo. These skirts were adopted during the 1800s. They're modeled on the skirts that uh, Pompeians were seeing being worn by foreigners. And they're worn on special occasions, cultural occasions, but they're not a part of the everyday wear. They're for dances, festivals, comatips, special occasions. They are an older part of the material culture, but they're not seen any longer as part of the everyday clothing worn. Today it is perhaps a Pompeian skirt that is considered a way of celebrating your identity as a Micronesian here in Micronesia. Clothing too has evolved over time. This Koshayan dress is an older style dress no longer seen as is this one. So even among the modern fabric styles there's change and evolution. This was an undergarment for the dresser skirt, a requirement for any Koshayan woman. One didn't just have a dress on, one had multiple layers on. Here on Pompeii, material culture includes the kirakai used to break the Sakawan inilap that is seen at Kamatips and at uh, events in which a high title is present. The Kirikai is Morindocitrifolia. That tree must be used, uh, the waypole tree. But here, a sack on any lap is being broken by a piece of kolo. This is incorrect. So, mature culture is something that, that can be lost and is being lost. Nobody in the NAS at this particular event realized that they're using the wrong tree to try to break their Sakao in any lap. Fortunately, some people are starting to write down some of the details. Cassiano Paul has started to record some of these for the college so that we might not forget some of these details of material culture. Sure. Okay, now when this is done, then there is also, uh, I will hold the post and I will say that it will be distributed. Usually there are four pedals or flat forms that will be used. So this one, we're using only using this for example, but both, all, all these four will be redistributed back to the four platforms, huh? the stone platforms. Okay, when they're distributed, they start with, it goes that one first, because that's so non, Balia, and then those other two. So, the one that goes to the so non, it's called Re Muslim. So, take your Re Muslim and put it there. Wait. Ala Re Muslim, but you want to wait. Raining Katao? Ray to belong, Wolamo? Or Ray Rain Katu Bang, Wolamo? That's it. 
Thus, material culture is a broad area that includes the tools, implements, decor, clothing, transportation in the form of canoes, and housing that make up the material goods that are used by a, a people or by a culture. Uh, it's an area of change, the clothing here being worn, our western jeans, but in a nod to the past, out of respect for the high chiefs who are present, people still remember to remove their shirt. That's a mark of respect. They've taken their shirts off out of respect for the high chiefs who are present. So, material culture is an area where there's change, evolution, adaptation. It's also an area where there's loss, some loss of knowledge, some loss of ways of doing things. Uh, very few people sleep under a thatched roof or paddle canoe to get to work. But it is still an important area of ethnobotanical culture, and it is the focus of this particular unit. You're going to make a presentation, a video, on any particular aspect you want of your material culture. You might want to present some item of material culture. You might want to present how to make some particular item. You choose whether you want to share an item with, uh, with uh, the class or you want to present an item. You'll do it. Keep the video short so you don't have uploading problems. Um, just a, a, a minute, two minutes, three minutes, whatever it takes. Use the editors that I've suggested. A U Cut is a possible editor, and there's others, so that it's uh, easier to upload. Save it at 720p, and it will be easier to upload. But you put together your own video and send me the link when you're done. You don't have to appear in the video. <laughs> I don't often appear in my videos because I'm usually behind the camera. But uh, do get that done and sent in. Uh, send the link in to me uh, to your video. To your video, upload it to upload it to YouTube, and uh, do something that you want to share, that you want to keep and preserve into the future. <laughs>